G'day, uh, Graham. So uh, cheers, mate, for uh, jumping on here with the Down Under Centre. So, um, Graham, I guess what we're going to talk a bit about today is a little bit about uh, BGC. We're also going to run through, uh, ask you a few questions about what the market's like for tradespeople in Australia, learn a bit, a bit, a bit about how your uh, organisation can help um, migrants and also assist with jobs and find out as much information as we can. Um, and we're going to tap into it about the lifestyle for a tradie in WA. Um, everything yeah. to what you guys pay. If you can give us some information on that, mate, that would be ideal. Um, and also how you guys help uh, migrants buying from plans, etc., as well. And obviously the demand for trades in, in WA. So, um, Graham, you're joining us from uh, BGC. So firstly, uh, welcome. And um, what's you. your role in the business, mate? I'm classed as the trade manager. I uh, look after trade relationships, apprenticeships, traineeships in the paraprofessional. So uh, basically uh, uh, one of the man managers that oversee that section. Excellent. And you had that role for a while, mate? No, I'm actually relatively new. I've only been here seven months, but I was um, before that I was in the Master Builders Association for five years as the business director over there. Oh, excellent. And that was uh, Master Builders Western Australia or as a, as a, as a whole? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, which is an arm of Master Builders Australia. Yep. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Well, let's just crack uh, right into it. Uh, so, just tell us a bit about BGC, please, mate. Yeah. Look, um, BGC is um, Australia's largest private family-owned business. It's made up of around seventeen different arms. Um, you're speaking today to the Home Group arm, which is the biggest home builder in Western Australia, and it ranks in the top um, three builders in Australia for, for building of homes. So it is a obviously a really large business. We also have a manufacturing arm. We also have um, brick making arms. We have quarries, transport, fibre cement arms, a precast arm. So we actually can supply most of our own materials, about 60% 60 of our own materials get That's supplied amazing. by ourselves. And um, yeah, so uh, obviously we also have, you know, a plumbing arm, um, enviro arm, um, have our own window arm. So yeah, so we're, we're a very lucky builder in that we, we source our own from our own business. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, and how about uh, BGC Home Group, mate? How does that work? Yeah, Home Group itself is made up of um, eight different eight different brands um, within its uh, within that. So, uh, if you're in WA, you'll see the BGC logo. Um, quite often, it'll be attached to another brand. So we do brands um, starting from from uh, Now Living, Aussie Living, Go Homes, Commodore Homes. Um, Terrace Homes, Smart Homes, um, Ventura Southwest, which is our Southwest, um, um, through and and they they actually land themselves in different markets within um, the, the the purchase of a new home. Gotcha. So yeah, you know, so you can be from our relatively low income arm through to our mid tier, um, what we would call our mid tier builder in Western Australia. Okay, so hence why you're saying you're like, you know, a very large building organisation down there uh, in Western Australia. And it, um, it's other areas as well, or is it just uh, Western Australia that you guys are focusing on? Yeah, um, we actually, the home building side is Western Australia only. Mm -hmm. um, our, the, our manufacturing arms, though, do go across Australia and into New Zealand. So um, we supply other building companies uh, throughout Australia. Excellent, mate. Excellent. Uh, okay, okay, so um, and now, you know, we've spoken many times on the phone, um, yep. spoken quite a few times now, which is really good. And we got introduced by ABBTF. Um, obviously, they can't, you know, generate, make enough bricks, and they're trying to get more brickies over to uh, Australia. So they sort of made an introduction to us. So yep. what, what sort of trades are you guys looking for at the moment? Yeah, look, um, uh, the WA market probably hasn't seen this type of boom since the mining boom of, of 2015. Um, the, the growth is uh, in, in new house builds is, has been astronomical. Um, so realistically, across the board, we need um, no, all trades, but, but our main areas of um, deficiency at the moment are bricklaying, carpentry, uh, tiling, plasterers, um, they're probably our main concreters is another area that we, we are struggling as well. So when you actually look at 
the conglomerate of of trades it's nearly everything that we're short on yeah but if you said look if we had a wish list um you know obviously bricklayer uh, carpentry would be our first cabs off the rank um yeah. the way we obviously the build process over here uh, pad down brick up um, um yeah roof on and uh in that you you get progressive payments normally at brick plate height so the quicker we can get to brick plate height obviously the quicker the money flows through the business and yeah sure goes through that way sure yeah. so you got a few uh obviously with the lack of trades it's obviously affecting that part now um graham i, I was down in what uh, esperance many moons ago i think yes. back in oh, 2006 maybe maybe beautiful, 2007 beautiful part of the country yeah oh, esperance yeah. is magic mate absolutely loved it down there so everyone listen and make sure you head down to uh <laughs> head down to esperance um mate i remember um plumbing down there and we were waiting on tilers we had to get tilers from perth to come down to esperance yeah. so we could uh, obviously move forward and and do our second fixes as plumbers i believe it then sort of um i think you uh western australia as a as a state uh became they caught up i guess and would you say like, like when did you guys start needing these trades like was it in the last couple of years or have i got it wrong and it's no been it actually happened rather years? quickly yeah for, we, we came out of a mining boom which was must have been probably 10 or 15 year boom when unprecedented highs in build numbers had a lot of migration at that stage. Uh, then we came out of the mining boom and everything slowed. Um, and then obviously uh, that 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 the, the slowdown actually went for quite a while, longer than normally our normal slowdown in Western Australia. It went for for about four and a half years, which was really unusual. And, Graham, and then COVID. Yeah. Sorry, mate. Just when you say um, slow down, I mean, how slow was it? You know, was it really like, like, was it easy to find a job or? really difficult to find no a job no then. no it was the worst it had been in 30 years um in wa so w we had never seen you know and, you know my father was a trade probably yep. the last time i saw it that slowed was back in his era <laughs> and as you can see by the lack of hair i'm not young so <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll say, so i'll say it's five years ago mate how's that sound <laughs> so yeah so it was it was a, it had been an unprecedented slowdown to that to, to that effect so um when when that happens in australia quite often your trades move around australia um and that's what happened a lot of uh, uh trades moved to the east because the east coast was in uh, a, 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 an upturn whereas western australia had, was come out of their upturn so we we kind of like ran on a two different markets yeah. depending on what side of the, what side of australia you were on and, and, and just with that, Graham, I find that amazing because I think it was back in like 2010, we couldn't get um, enough uh, uh, electricians, plumbers over to Western Australia. Yeah. Just we couldn't get enough. You know, we're attending events yeah. and everything. Uh, obviously, now we run our own um, events, et cetera. But then it sort of went all the way to the East Coast, like all the employees in New South Wales. Which is, why don't they just go from WA to, to New South Wales? But we know, being Aussies, that... It's uh, it's a fair hike, mate. It's not just uh, down the yep. road, is it? It's sort of from you know, you no, see the Perth. It's, it's, quite you know, a drive. it's probably three and a half to four thousand k's away. So yeah. it is a it's a really big hike. If you do, decide to hop in the car and do it, you're gone for you're gone for four or five days before you even see the the major cities on the east coast. Um, so yeah, so look, it, it it becomes a major move for for a, a a family if they have to move from the west coast to the east coast, or vice versa. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you know, in the complete opposite, what started to happen, the the market picked up first in WA, uh, mainly because people would know, and even I would presume in your neck of the woods um western australia australia is one of the best countries in the world for you know not having COVID. Yep. so what that meant for our economy was that we were able to come out of of the you know we we had a relatively buoyant economy that bounced back fairly quickly the demand then on our minerals um became high because okay. the rest of the world were requiring minerals, mainly again, because a lot of the mining companies in the other countries had to shut down due to COVID. So they then were buying off Australia because we were still open for trade. Interesting, yeah. So, and I think so then all of a sudden that you start to swallow up your trades back into the mines again. So yeah, yeah. I, I, and I, I can imagine. Yeah, I think obviously when, when, when there's a mining um, town being built, I guess, and they're, and they're 
getting lots of minerals from the ground. Is that where um, a lot of work comes in? Obviously, do they need to build like hospitals, schools? Is there housing? So they're sort of building like yeah. a, a little village, basically a little town around these yeah. mining areas. Did, does that drive it? They, they do. They do. And they're trying to push that harder from, from that aspect for, for the build process. But most of it's fly in, fly out, out of the capital cities, West you know, Perth being the major capital city of WA. So most of the miners fly direct in from Perth. So they live in Perth and then they fly up, spend a period of time, can be a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, depending on what your fly in, fly out um, term, uh, terms are. And then they return back to the city um, for a period where they have off. Yeah. So that's why you get such a large, you know, increase in numbers as well in house builds in the in Perth itself. Sure. So uh, that, there are some that 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 are which the government's trying to push people to go to those regional centres, mm -hmm. um, but um, I would say they're having limited success in that area. Um, um, so, you know, exactly what you were saying. Infrastructure-wise, they've normally got good infrastructure. They normally, then you, you rely on, you know, when the family moves, is there a, potentially a job for the wife or the wife maybe on the mine yeah. and, and the husband's looking for a job? So, you know, so it's slightly different aesthetics to what, you know, is in the city where everything's here and, you know, yeah, um, you've, you've got plenty to do. So Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think, I, I remember once, mate, um, being a, being a plumber from Vic, Melbourne, you know, big Collingwood supporter, mate. We spoke about this last time. Yeah, uh, yeah we won't hold that against that, I, so. <laughs> I remember uh, calling up a company in WA. I must This must have been 2004, maybe, whatever. It was a long time ago. I remember calling them up saying, oh, look, I'm from Vic. Um, I've seen you got jobs offered for the mines. Um, and the bloke laughed at me on the phone. He goes, oh, are you calling about the Melbourne myth? And I'm like, what's that? And he's like, oh, well, we're going to fly you to, from Melbourne to the mines, get you working for two weeks and fly you back. To melbourne well that doesn't happen you've got to be settled in wa and we'll do that but only for the right people and i was like wow like you know it was it's always been a great attraction for tradies from other areas uh in australia to head there but i guess now um you know as we've spoken about and for the listeners today you've tried to get people from other states and territories uh it's challenging yeah. you've tried you've obviously uh, you know worked with apprentices uh and, and trying to build all that up and, you know, I mean, what's happening? Are the kids not wanting to uh, do apprenticeships anymore? Is is it uh, harder? Or have you got sort of, you've, um, you've continued a flow of apprenticeships, but the demand just means you've now got to start looking for English speaking skilled migrants. Yeah, and, and that would, I would say that's it. We have a, we have a pretty good uptake of uh, apprentices overall, and we have, you know, a, a fair, fair chunk of youth, but our unemployment in Western Australia is down to around 4.5%. When you get that low, you know, you're really waiting for the next batch of kids to come out of school to, before you can actually recruit to an apprenticeship level. So, you know, so for us, it's, uh, that, you know, we, we push actually into the schools to try and pick up kids and get them as they leave. Yeah. Um, you know, from a from a trade point of view, that's exactly right. The trades, um, because there's so much work, the trades need, you know, the apprentices to help them, which is good because what we're trying to do, our whole program is about trying to um, have a sustainable future in the construction for a, for a lot of these people. Um, so, you know, Really, we work very, very hard on bringing them through a process, bringing them through their uh, their apprenticeship, giving them op options in pathways once they have their apprenticeship, you know, whether they want to go and subcontract, whether they want to work for us, whether they want to have a change of career. But yep. what we don't want to do is lose them out of construction. It's as simple as that. If we lose them out of construction, that puts more pressure again on trying to to, to, to get people back in. And, and I think we all know what it's like. You can't just give someone a hammer and say you're a carpenter you know, give someone a trowel and say you're a bricklayer. It, it takes years to to master that. And I think that's what we're yeah. really, you know, happy with at the Down Under Centre. You know, we're supplying English speaking skilled migrants. Um, you know, they've done their skills assessments. So they've either been UK trained for three years and have, uh, you know, an apprenticeship in you know, VQ level three and have three years of paid work experience or no UK or no UK quals, for example, in five years. Um, but they're arriving with their full Australian qualifications, which obviously helps where for employees like yourself, because it makes it easier for to insure them. It also knows uh, you guys are aware they've been assessed against Australian standards, which is really, uh, you know, extremely important. Um, mate, look, I loved being a tradie back um, 
uh, back home. I sort of feel weird now behind a desk, to be honest, Graham. It's, um, I'm adjusting <laughs> to it. Uh, but whenever I get a chance to, to do something around the house or even around the office, mate, I, I'd be you know, happy to do that. Mate, life as a tradie in WA, I mean, in Victoria, yeah. it was amazing. Um, Give us a bit, have you got any insight, mate, about life as a tradie in Western Australia? Yeah, you? look, you know, being a West Australian born and bred, um, you know, I would I, I would be biased and say it's the best state to come to. But look, let, let's let's be realistic about, about what Western Australia is. If you're very much an outdoor person, um, you'll love Western Australia. Western Australia literally has sunshine, um, you know, probably for, for 10 months of the year, ranging Amazing. in temperatures. It's not like Victoria where, you know, you do freeze to death over there in winter. <laughs> so <laughs> um, what I, but you know, what, what I would say is, you know, if, if you, uh, uh, if you love the outdoors, if you love um, the beaches, if you love outdoor, um, you know, whether it's barbecue or whether you like going out for meals at night, um, you know, it's, uh, that's WA, it's, it's a warm climate. Everyone, you know, you always hear about the 40 degree days, but let's be realistic. That's our summers. Yep. So, you know, our summers go from December through through to Mar uh, uh, yeah, March. That's correct. Yeah. So um, December, it starts off quite mild in the summer. You know, and when I say mild in the mid 20s, that would be hot for a, an English person. But, you know, you're, you're easing into it. Where, where a person makes a big mistake when they migrate is they come in in February. That's yep. the peak of our summer. And all of a sudden you do get those mid 30s to high 30s and even into the 40s. Our tradesmen adapt. That's what people don't realise. Our trades aren't on site at 40 degrees. It's and just too hot. Graham, just with that, I mean, is there, um, okay, when you say they adapt, they're not on site with that. Uh, I know in Melbourne, I did a few, uh, I don't know, man, I didn't really like it too much, but anyway, with the union side of it, um, we used to knock off when it got to 35. Do they have that sort of rule uh, in Western Australia? Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, and, and, you know, most of our tradies, they work early in the morning and knock off before it gets to 35 and then they're normally at home or down the beach, you know, yep. in a cooler area or in air conditioning. So, yes, exactly that. Our sites still do close down in those hot temperatures. Um, but most of our tradies, because we start off with the cooler mornings, um, most of them get to work early and work through till before the peak of the heat hits. Now, the peak of the heat normally hits kind of like around two o'clock in the afternoon. So most of our tradies are normally home in the in a mid in a, in a hot summer in those in those hot days. They're probably yep. home by one thirty, you know, out of the heat. So uh, whereas the mild days, I work all the way through, and and you know, like. Most of our brick, our brick layers are probably, and the chippies are the ones that get affected the most by by the heat because they're out in the direct sunlight. But I'd say um, probably sixty percent of our brickies in in BGC are English, and oh, they've wow. adapted to the heat. Yeah, you might yeah. you might so, pick up an accent, mate, if you keep hanging around with them. <laughs> exactly. You know? So they, so they adapt to the heat. You know, fair, fair, normally takes them the summer. The first one will knock them about a bit. But then, you know, when you go into our winter months, like uh, last night it was six degrees in Perth, but it, it, it gets up to 25 during the day. So, again, it's very cold in the morning. That's winter, yeah. So, you know, so, um, you know, you know, you talk about that. I'll still have a tonight. I'll still have a barbecue out now. Our fresco area out the out the back of our house. Um, you know, we class uh, the night at six degrees cold, but it'll be ten degrees when I'm cooking, and and you sure. know we'll eat and come inside. So you know, yes, you do get rain. Um, there's, you know, there's, we do get it. You get you get rain for about two months of the year over here. Um, and those, you know, and those are the days our tradies juggle because, you know, normal site, brick, uh, if you're laying bricks, you, 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 you can't lay in the rain, you can't stand on a roof in the rain. Yeah. So again, they're adaptable. You're not allowed to work on a site on a Sunday in, in over here. I don't oh, wow. know if not it's at the all. same. No, no. Okay. So, um, uh, not unless it's a remote regional area where you've got no neighbours. Yep. So more, they, they'll make it up on a Saturday or something like that. So, yeah, yeah. so, you know, that, that, that's the flexible lifestyle that, that you have over here. It's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's a tough one, Graham, because we get lots of clients, mate, that when it, like when it rains, I just know the day is going to be, you know, our busiest months of, I, I guess, from... January, people come back from Christmas and all that. And then from January to sort of mm -hmm. April, we're flat out. And obviously that's, you know, sort of winter over here. Um, and I reckon it'd be tough for brickies being self-employed and everything. Cause obviously, and, and, and chippies and other tradies, cause you are out, yeah. outside and then you're sort of 
you, you know, you flip it over on the other side and say that's a sort of hotter months. But as you say, mate, it's managing expectations. But I don't think it's all about the weather as well. It's, um, as you said, it's about the lifestyle. I noticed, um, a, you know, again, from, from Melbourne to Western Australia, you guys have a really good Sunday session over there. It's quite popular. There's a few nice pubs. And yeah, all that. yeah. Um, well, I probably, you know, you know, yeah, you know, I, I would say that, you know, WA or, or Perth, um, or, it always sits in the top 10 most livable cities in the world. And, yeah. and we probably haven't come out of that for a long time. Um, but exactly that. Like I say, we've got the, the perfect weather if you want to. And, I, you know, like I live in the northern suburbs of Perth, um, literally from where I am um, upwards. It's, you know, it's all English um, in, in this northern area that I, I'm in. <laughs> there's a lot of English pubs. There's um, the English do love uh, their pub lifestyle. They don't lose it over here difference yeah. is they drink a they drink a freezing cold beer over here <laughs> oh, but you know what that's great I, I've, I've got like hundreds of clients maybe i don't know like, yeah. like lots lots of clients over in wa we've got an office down there in wa as well and uh, lee who works for us down there she loves it she's like oh my god like it's so different whereas we're living we're kind of living the life we wanted to but i always think about migration it's this whole emotional side you know there's there's a lot of sacrifice that comes with it and i think it, it is managing your expectations and also depending on what you're trying to achieve, you know, if you're trying to earn a bit of money down there in WA and I might, um, I'll be cheeky enough to ask you a bit about that in a minute. Um, yeah, obviously, you know, yeah. it pays well um, to be a tradie in Australia, but you've, it's the whole lifestyle uh, change. And what I hear from the people on the phone is, well, we've had enough with the weather. We've had enough. We want to try something new and different. And, you know, it takes a special person to migrate. It, it would be the hardest yeah. thing. And it's expensive for them. Um, obviously, yeah, yeah. you know, we're going to work together and and, and and try to get it to a point where our tradies are arriving with jobs with you guys before they arrive. Um, yeah. And having, in, in previous chats we've had, I was amazed to see how you guys uh, accommodate that as well and, and, and work with clients on that. And I think between the two businesses, we're going to um, make that transition easier. But it does get mm. hot. It's like um, it's it, it's quite English. The beaches in Western Australia. I mean, you're going to be biased about this, but I mean, Queensland beaches, WA beaches, mate. Do you, you know what do you reckon? Do yeah, they well, they Queensland. They call that you know the Golden Mile because the beaches look like yellow sand to us. So yeah. <laughs> they are golden, whereas if the beaches in Western Australia are snow white. Yeah, I know. So that. they are, aren't they? Yeah, so, the kangaroos that's, and all that. that's why we look at them. We go, we, we, you know, and there's this always this rivalry between the states, as there is, as there is overseas with, with you guys, you know. But you know, we always Queensland. Most Queenslanders come to West Australia if they migrate or if they come across. Most yeah. West Australians go to Queensland. Um, but you know, the, the, the local joke is, well, it's just yellow sand on their beaches, but they like to call it golden. <laughs> no, I reckon the Queenslanders, mate, they got like a big accent too, don't you reckon? They got like a real strong Aussie accent. They're not kind of laid back a bit yeah. enough. Sorry for the Queenslanders. We can there. understand them. It's certainly yeah. not an English to Scott, Scott uh, accent. That's for sure. We can still understand them. Oh, so. mate, we, uh, when we do the shows, Graham, we go to um, a place like Newcastle and, and everything. And I, yeah. I'm just like, whoa, they're like, I don't know, not even that far from other areas. And they've got their own little language and it's so strong, mm. the Welsh language yeah. and everything. And as like you say, yeah. mate, 60% of people that are working with you guys are from uh, from over the UK. Mate, look, yeah. get straight into it. What do you, you know, like, like, like what does a trader earn? Um, let, we spoke about bricklayers earlier. What, is, yeah, well, what does a bricklayer earn, mate? We have, two, you know, we have two different tiers. So that's probably the easiest way. We do, we do have bricklayers who work direct for us and those opportunities do arise. They earn... Probably in uh, around 110,000 a year as a salary, um, and then we usually give them a huge allowance. But it's if you're subcontracting to us, um, you know, you are always earning. Well, again, it's going to be how hard you want to yep. want to work. But uh, they, they'll they'll range between 150 and 200 thousand dollars at the moment as a subcontract bricklayer. Yeah. Well, okay. Now you mentioned the word you, mate. So a lot, not, not, not many of our listeners might know what a you oh, yeah, is. Oh, yeah, sorry. So, uh, the you work truck, guys, without the uh, without the canopy on the back. And it's so yes. weird here living in London, mate. We've got to lock the door, lock the windows, lock everything. But when I was in WA as a plumber, I just used to leave my tools in the back of the ute and I'd still be yeah. there in the morning. 
Um, yeah, well, it's not probably not. It's not quite as good as that anymore. We still do have a bit of theft, but yeah, look out! I, I didn't realise there you go. That's how naive I am. That you guys had to lock everything up. Our guys set, usually sit them on a ute or have a trailer. So but that's yeah. London, mate. There's beautiful parts of the UK where probably it's a bit more chilled, but. Um, yeah, yeah. Now, okay, so you guys are sort of, now, um, um, superannuation, I mean, pension, that's something yeah. that's quite big in yeah. Australia, and I talk about that at our events and everything. Um, I believe it's 9.5% at the moment, but it's going up to 10%. Um, percent. So if you're saying that you're um, on a paying them you know, 120 grand a year, is that um, including the super or is it super on top so of that? If you're on a, if you're on a, uh, on a salary base with us, um, it's 110 grand plus super. So you'd be on 100 and, you know, roughly if it's 10%, uh, there's 11 grand, uh, 10, uh, 11 grand there. Yeah. So yeah, roughly so, um, 121 would be your package. So that's really important, um, you know, I think for people to listen to. So you're earning your 110 and then you've got that 11,000. You don't get access to that. You, when you retire, that all that money then gets put towards your retirement. And that's when you'll see uh, lots of people, mate, jumping around in their motorhomes, Going down from um, yep. from the white sands to the golden sands uh, of yep. Australia, going past cold Victoria as you put it before, uh, watching the mighty pies <laughs> play at the MCG. We can plan their whole trip easy enough. Yep. Uh, but yeah, the pensions I think really good, and um, I think that's a difference mm. between employed and self-employed. So if you're employed and you're on a salary with you guys, it's good money plus yep. uh, pension. You give a ute allowance, etc. Now, what about if a bricklayer, for example, uh, wanted chose to be self-employed? um uh working that's what in western got, australia that's what, we're, what do you reckon they'll be earning yeah that's yeah that that's what we class as a subcontractor over here and yep. they would earn in the current market um uh, again it, it depends on on the team some teams work harder than the other at the moment um i yep. would declare that um you'll write you'll earn anything from you know easily 150 they're up to 200,000, some of the brickies. So, you know, we're in a market at the moment that's very buoyant. Um, um, so, so when, and not, that that's Australian right? dollars, of course. Is that, I mean, Sorry? Got, um, you say 150, 110, two, you know, 200. Yep. Is that good? I mean, if yep. someone was working at a, uh, in admin, maybe, okay. Yep. Or, um, and again, I'm just throwing these questions at you. So, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah, apologies, yeah. I'm putting you under the spot here, mate. But I mean, what would a normal um, wage in Western Australia be? A normal salary? For if you look at an average salary in WA, it's probably around 75,000. Okay. So, that one, that's a, that's a, that's quite a big jump, mate. That's quite a lifestyle. <laughs> Uh, jump now oh, mate, you'd be you'd be very that's kind of like mining rates when you're up there with the brickies at the moment that's and you're like still you're doing your normal board. seven till three or when it, you know obviously the hotter days um the months yeah. we spoke about so and then you've still got okay so that's um yeah bit of incentive itself isn't it really i mean the money is good yeah and well we work on the fact that they they normally work for the way we work at uh, that salary is based on um around 48 weeks of the year you'll work even you know four weeks off yeah so you will lose rain days in that so um like i say it rains for probably you know uh, four to six four to eight weeks max yep. um that would be that would be a really wet so uh wet wet winter for us yeah um so you know if you work on 44 to 48 weeks i'll earn that in that term um okay. so it's not, not a full year if you know what i mean it's because yep. you have your rain days off so yeah yep oh excellent mate um Carpenters, what do you reckon carpenters are on, mate, at the moment? Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so they would be probably not – look, brick, brick layers are a premium at the moment because we've got so many builds. Um, you know, we, there's a really high demand on them. The demand will hit the, the, the chippies in the net as the as the houses get built. Yep. So they would be in that, you know, mid, mid tier of probably 120 to 150 at the moment. Jeez, that's so, big. That's yeah. big bucks, mate. That's big. Yeah, bucks. I remember mum, mum and dad telling me to go to university, and I was like, "Nah, I think I'll be a plumber." You know? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, geez. So I guess no, I and, like we, you know, we haven't seen these type of pay rates um, for you know since the last boom. I'll be honest with you. You know, even out of the boom, um, you know, they still earn they still earn really good money. Not as good as what they're earning now, though. And, yeah, you know, they're earning really good money at the moment. Well, this is peak. I think that happens with every, you know, everything. You've got peaks and troughs, haven't you, with everything, yeah. you know. Um, okay, so or, now um, you guys can also assist with uh, buying houses from um, plans as well. And that's yeah. 
That how, how does that work, mate? I mean, is that is that a yeah. common thing? Because lots of people when they migrate, um, you know, will generally have to be working for about three to six months um, to be eligible for a mortgage. Um, yeah. And you guys can offer assistance with that. But you guys also, I think that's why you're so busy, isn't it? Because you guys build from plans um, and you've got some really good contracts. And um, mate, at the moment. Um, what did Western Western Australia gave a bit of a grant to people living in WA for new homes? Is that correct? Is that right? Yeah, that's at the moment? correct. If you're a if you're a first home buyer, I'd have to. Um, this was this this is what sent the, the building through the roof. You you had a state grant of twenty five thousand, and then if you qualified for the federal grant, you got another forty thousand. So you got sixty thousand dollar grant. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's just, if you sorry, qualified. Graham, for, I'm so intrigued in all this, mate. What, what does a house yeah. cost in where if you're getting 65 grand? What what does a house in I don't know a suburb Depend of Perth cost you? Um, well, it's going to range. Which suburb do you want to live in? It's probably like England in this respect. But if you say just a you know run of the mill middle class person, say that wants to not live on the on the ocean, right on the ocean. Yeah. Um, you know, live in a little bit, you're probably talking you could build a get a house and and house and land package from probably five hundred grand. Mate, five hundred grand is um uh, you know, again, mate, I'm a plumber, I'll stick to what mainly I know, but five I think it's one point eight three at the moment, the conversion rate. So that's what about two hundred and eighty thousand pound, whatever it is, two eighty five yeah. pound yeah. transferred yeah. over. Um, yeah, that's really yeah. good. Where most people come to Perth is they don't scrimp on the spin; they build a bigger house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you know, um, again, I I'm talking that you're not on the coast. The coast is very expensive so yeah. if you want to live on the water. Well, how much uh, would that jump, mate? Just off the top of your head, Graham. We're not going to hold you to it, mate. Like um, I live 800 metres off the beach, 15 k's out of town, and that would be, my house would be 1.5 million. Okay, so it jumps up, obviously, um, a lot, but obviously that's, a mate, that's touching the water almost. That's 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 close. Yeah, yeah, um, 800 metres, not like one street, one, one and a half streets, literally a park and a street in the way. Uh, when I come and visit, mate, if you, you and the family want to evacuate it, mate, for my <laughs> kids, and uh, I'll, I'll definitely take it off your hands for a week. Um, okay, yeah, so, so ju ju just with it, so yeah, you guys so do help. Go up significantly. Sorry, sorry. No, that's yeah, okay, mate. That's okay, mate. So you guys do help with um, with buying from um, plants. How, how? I mean, is it easy to do? Is it? Is it? Um, oh, I guess from the day that someone inquires with you to actually being approved and how long does that process take? So if a migrant comes over, they're interested in buying um, some of the plans, roughly how long would that take? Uh, well, this is this is where you're gonna run into issues right now is because there's so many builds, the build process taking quite a while. Um, from the day you probably started to look at your house to finding a block, building the house, getting to shift in, I don't believe in the current market you'd see change out of 18 months. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Maybe even a little bit longer. That's how much work we've got though. That's just giving you an indication. You know, it, there is, there is so many houses to be built in Perth at the moment that you kind of like just got to hop in the line, if you know what I mean. And we can say the build process will slow down and there's no doubt it has, but it's also the planning process the the whole pro, the whole, system you got to go through because you've got to get all everything approved it, there's just a build up in every stage so you know you, you know even though you want to build it's it's the toughest time it's the, it's the longest term we've had since 2015 to build a house put it that well place. that was my question so 2015 wow so that's um god i'm getting old mate 2015 sounded not that long ago but now looking back yeah. mate, six years ago yeah, that's correct yeah yeah Crazy. so and you know and 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 the, and the people saw that so that would that's the hardest thing you know um it, it, that that you then have to find and we understand this for and we do try and help out where we can um you have to try and find some accommodation to to live in while you then select a, a normally select a place you want to li uh, live that would be your first big selection yeah like i said whether it's north or south um it's all beautiful anyway you well, just make sure you're going to want to live at your house mate yeah, <laughs> we'll have to build a few rooms yeah. out the back for our tradies coming yeah, over. Yeah, the back of my joint. Yeah, but um, they'll, they'll choose they'll choose north or south. Um, 
um, you know, and we kind of like got a river in the middle and that's how we distinguish, you know, um, um, whether you're north of that river or south of that river, that's how we distinguish yeah. the two so areas. So that's N-O-R-S-O-R, is that right, mate? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we get lots of people call us up and go, well, we want to move to Perth, but we're, uh, what's a nor? And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, we'll, north we'll of the river. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, now, so. Maybe, um, so look, I mean, you know, obviously the Down Under Center, we can help people find property. We've got partners that do all that. Um, yeah. But yep. It, it's really tough in lots of areas in Australia at the moment. Um, obviously, Western Australia is going through a boom. Me and you have spoken about Queensland, New South Wales, et cetera, in the past. So it's Australia-wide, but we want to focus on getting tradespeople um, over to Western Australia. We'll get them job ready, um, have them prepared. Now, um, before I ask you the next question, you spoke to me, um, one of the first conversations we had, there was a reason why you wanted to target brickies from um, uh, WA, mate. Do you just want to um, yep. talk a bit about that? Because obviously, you, you know, you're, you're, you're a large company, you've targeted the right people and you want to make sure that it's best, the best people are working for you because they need to get the best product, the fastest way to do it. And, the, you know, uh, BGC would continue to be strong. So how does it work, mate? What's the similarities? Yeah, yeah. Um... Literally, our, our codes and standards are a duplicate, not 100%, but I would say probably 85 to 90% that of what an English um, codes and standards are. So straight away, when you, when you come over, you you know 90% of the rulings um, of, of how you do that. We're a double brick builder in this state, um, which um, is two, you know, the two bricks with wall ties. Um, um, which means you, that the bricklayer does the set out. If yep. you're a if you're if you're a single brick, normally it's done by the the carpenter. So our brickies need to be able to set out. So even if you bring a bricklayer over from the east coast to Western Australia, quite often you've got to teach them how to set out uh, um, you know a, a job. Whereas we don't have to worry about that with the English guys. We, you know we with if, if we take on a a um, bricklayer, we normally send them out with one of our bricklaying teams that have been with us a long time for two or three builds okay. and then one of our supervisors helps them with their first um you know just overseas doesn't actually get involved just overseas to make sure they yeah. don't make mistakes on their set out yeah. normally the english guys once they've done it once um sometimes they can ring up and say can you come back and just double check me for the second time yeah. but normally it's that quick that they'll pick it up and they're you know that we also know the quality of the bricklaying um uh, guys that come out of, you know, um, whether it's England and Ireland for that matter, um, that they're very good bricklayers from both areas. So um, we have a lot of confidence in those guys. And that's why so many of our guys are from from um, England or Ireland that actually lay bricks with us. So. I, just, I just think it's really good, mate, because again, I'm all about the emotional side of migration. I think um, it's, just, it's just a huge move. And I think people need to honestly consider obviously the pros and cons, but it is the emotional side. There's a cost to migration, skills assessment, English test, visas, waiting, the pandemic's just a, you know, it's, 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 I think emotionally hurts so many people about the, uh, the not knowing and immigration haven't really been forthcoming with information, which, uh, which never helps. But at the same time that um, I think if, you know, if you're a bricklayer and you're, and you're arriving, I say to my plumbers when I'm uh, doing the assessments with them, there's terminology differences and everything. It's the same thing, okay? It's very similar, but it's not exactly the same. And I like the fact that you'll sort of, you know, give them a few builds with a strong team. Um, and then after that, they should be right. And, you know, if they are, they just carry on working away with you. Um, and on the money that you guys are paying, um, why wouldn't you? So, mate, a couple more questions. Uh, so, what, you know, the demand for trades in Western Australia, how long is it going to go for? What are we looking at? Yeah, well, I can only speak for BGC in this case, but what I can say is our current book stretches out for just over three years. So, we've Gosh. got three years worth of builds. At right at the moment and our sales team team are still selling selling so um yeah so we we have got a very strong book um and look i will say most builders in western australia have got a strong book at the moment um there wouldn't be many that don't but we would have the strongest in in the state um sure. being the biggest builder over here so yeah look i i think you could safely look at um um three to the and the, i would say even closer to four years now that um, you know that, that there's plenty of work uh, um, in, in that whole build process, whether you're a bricklayer, a chippy, or 
or whatever. Yeah. As you mentioned earlier, it's just going to progress, isn't it? We start with the bricks and everything like that, and we'll start getting the other trades. It's it's you know it's going to be needed, uh, and it's a strategy that I think companies have to go out there and try and find it. And it's been a tough year with migration, mate. You know, you you you, you hit the nail on the head earlier, Graham. You know, Australia, when I speak to my family who are based in uh, in Melbourne, I think I've said Melbourne about 15 times. I was trying to get it out there, guys. Don't forget about Melbourne. Um, <laughs> but, but when I chat to them, mate, they've had a few lockdowns. I think they're currently uh, just eased off a lockdown at the moment. And WA uh, haven't, obviously, the incentive of, uh, you know, up to 65000 if you can get the government grant as well, it helps. But it's just, it's it's amazing how, for me, if you've got a country that, needing so many people you've got skilled migrants knocking on the door going hey come on let us in and obviously we're gonna have you know people have to quarantine when they get there um yeah. i mean as a i mean again graham um you know you don't have to answer these questions but as a yeah. you know as a person living in wa i mean what feedback do you hear from how how people in the uk have been affected by you know the pandemic just as a person not as a business just just as a person. i, I would you know like I, I go out and visit a lot of our trades on site and a lot of them in english and it's scary how many of them have either lost relatives or have been you know have got COVID and 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 severe now you know in, in comparison i'll give you an example in perth right now we don't have a case of COVID. haven't had one for i don't know how long and we don't even have one in our ho quarantine hotels. So there's yeah. not, not one single case of COVID in WA, but then when you speak to the tradies that come from, you know, overseas and especially, you know, England and, and those areas, um, it's just horrific what you hear. And you just, you, you are glad in a lot of ways that, you know, you, you don't have the issues that they that you guys have got over there. It, it, it does have, you know, we, we will all sit here and find something to, to say is bad with not having it. We should open up the borders quicker. We should do that. Yep. Um, but the simple fact is, you know, if we opened up the borders tomorrow and there was a mass rush of migration, we've already got just in our own country, just with our with the people that live here already, we've got a three to four year book. We would struggle to even be able to build a house for, you know, the migrants coming through. So, sure. it's, you know, so we we are saying the next big wave of our boom will be when we open the borders again and and there will be no doubt we, we you know we, we're a little we're behind in vaccinations but we're the government's getting some momentum behind that now yeah, they definitely and, are. Um, i can feel it too i really can yeah so so i think you know our our vaccination um program will get stronger and once i think we'll get to a certain level you'll start to see the borders open i don't say there still won't be quarantine times when you come in so you know, normally when a person flies in from overseas they quarantine for 14 days in western australia and you get you know you get multiple um, um tests done in that time and then they let you out into the community and away you go um so i think that you know that that that'll still be there for a while but the thing is you, you still want people coming into your country um and and we are a migrant country yeah, of course. You know, yeah. Migration is what's made Australia. There's no bones about it. Anyway, like, you know, everyone says, oh, you're Australian. No, no. My grandparents were from Wales, you know, exactly the same as every other Australian. They've come from somewhere. Yeah. Um, it's only the Aboriginals that were the original landholders here. So, you know, so we are from Australia, that. mate. I got that from the uh, from the Scottish heritage, I think, being a, a, a you know, part <laughs> exactly. of the Witham family. Exactly. Um, yeah. You know, and, and again, I think every, some, sometimes people look at the news or they hear the news and everything like that and they think, okay, well, the borders open. Well, I think, you know, again, it's all about managing expectations. Again, the, the borders probably won't open, you know, September 20, 2022, the borders are open and everything can just be going crazy yeah. again. But it's yeah. about getting your skilled English speaking migrants coming yeah. over to, to, to help the development through Western Australia for, you know, for your projects, et cetera. And, you know, for, I mean, I can speak for Down Under Centre clients. They're just absolute champions. These are, these are just um, people that have invested their own money, their time. You know, if, if we look at the migration system, they, they have to do a skills assessment. I, I agree with that. You know, make sure you've got the necessary skills. Um, they don't need to do an English test if they've got a UK passport. But anyway, they'll do an English test. And, um, you know, me being a tradie, my English is terrible, mate. But you know, I've actually never sat the English test because I'm petrified off. But we're making these bricklayers, carpenters do a skills assessment and English test, spend so much money to get to a point where they've paid their migration fees 
some of my clients mate it's really sad they've you know that they're expecting the um uh well no one knew the pandemic was coming it just came okay yeah. And, yeah. and and they followed all the rules they they were waiting um for the timeline for the visa to be granted they sold their houses their cars saying goodbye to family members the pandemic came the day that the actual uh, australia shut its borders i had two clients call me up at like six in the morning via via facebook going hey they've shut the border in australia We're about to board a flight board a flight what do we do and i'm like i don't know i've my, yeah. one of my kids was quite young at the time. I'm, I'm like, I actually don't know. Um, I yeah. think you need to take advice from them. And now, um, you know, a year and a half into it, I would like to think that Australian immigration um, will start to realise we've got these people coming over. Oh, sorry, like, sorry, that like we have people, there's a demand, put them in quarantine, let them, you know, do the two weeks, 100%, 100%. Yeah. We need to make sure people aren't um, bringing COVID over. If you, if Australia have worked so hard and, and I guess sacrificed in the first lockdown and, and people that run their own business, you know, the emotional side um, of it, you've done so well to protect Australia. You know, I think they've done quite well with that. Um, yeah. But maybe start letting, hopefully we can start seeing some movement. And that's not for me or you to say, is it, at the end of the day, we yeah. we don't control well, you know, that. And, yeah, you, you, but you raise a good point. There's no doubt there is um, business, you know, business of all sizes in Australia that um, are now saying there has to be a plan around it. Yeah. Um, we just don't have enough people to to cover you know the amount of work whether it's whether it's construction or other industries but you know i can only speak for construction but I, we're definitely short of workers um so i have no doubt that that the the government is getting a lot of businesses now so we have to have a plan to start to actually how do we even if we start to trickle feed the, um, them to come through. So I, I, there is no doubt the government would be speaking about that now. Um, we're yeah. not the only state with shortages. Every state's got shortages. So they'd be getting pressure from all over Australia, not just out of Western Australia. It's so, a horrible situation you know, for them, Graham, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a horrible yeah. situation. At what risk do you put, you know, citizens in? And I've got, you know, I've, I've you know, I'm an Aussie, I've got family over there. And as soon as there's an outbreak, you know, I've got mates and friends and whoever, you know, it's on your Facebook group or, or general comments, you know, stop letting people in, that will solve the problem. Mm -hmm. But then you can't be building houses, you can't be doing things. So it's, right. it's such a tough one. Um, but I think for the moment, I mean, you know, for us, um, I'm really excited about our new venture we're putting together. Um, yep. I think, you know, what we're trying to do is prepare a wave of English speaking skilled migrants coming over um, to be employed by you guys, uh, you know, who, who will, who will assist where you can. You've, you know, um, we've spoken about that. You've got plenty of English people working for you already. Um, we've spoken a bit about how you guys don't just throw them in the deep end. You're there to support the workers and everything like that. And, you know, off apart from this conversation, we've spoken about how, how ready we're going to prepare our clients um, coming over. So um, on that, Graham, thank you um, so much, mate. I really appreciate your time. And I'm sure people listening today, um, you know, really do because again, it's a big move migrating to Australia. What's on the other side? Now, what's on the other side now is a demand for skilled people and it's there and it's going to be there for the you know foreseeable future for the next few years. Um, yeah. the hiccup is, um, the pandemic at the moment, you know, let's see what happens with that. We don't have a say in that. That's just going to evolve how, um, how it evolves. So, um, mate, what we'll do is, um, anyone listening, if you want to get a hold of the down under center, um, chat with us, we'll see what you're eligible for, uh, you know, all the, um, uh, CVs, details and everything like that will be sent over, um, with you guys, okay, um, to BGC, and we can sort of uh, go from there. Is there anything you'd like to add, mate, before we uh, before we yeah, wrap this probably, up? You know, for us, um, that's probably the easiest way. We don't want to, you know, inundate, you know, our HR departments with everyone contacting them. That was the whole idea of setting up with the Down Under Centre so that we could actually have a filter through to us. Um, we can then liaise with you guys and you know on what's the what's the current trades that are there's a heavy demand on and and you know you guys can can do that for us um but yeah so so definitely i'd i'd say to you know anyone listening um to contact yourselves um first don't just come to us direct um and then we you you uh, feed them through to us and then we'll go from there to 
to yep. to help them out if if they choose WA as their destination, and if they don't, they're crazy. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Well, I'm interested this when I interview some uh, if other uh, employers from other states and territories, mate. Um, mate, big question: Who's going to win the flag this year in the AFL footy? Because these migrants have to know that the AFL <laughs> is the game we play. We don't play. We don't throw that rugby league ball and that rugby union ball anymore. It's all about the <laughs> AFL. So, so who's the tip for the flag this year, mate? 2021. Um, look, I, I'm a being a West Australian, I, I love my West Coast Eagles. Um, but uh, they're struggling a little bit at the moment, they're down a little bit on the on the ladder. Um, I'd like to say the West Coast Eagles because I'm Western Australian, but I do think it's probably going to be an East Coast team this year. Um, I just don't know who, but so I'll say I'll say West Coast because I'm a West Australian. So right, well, mate, I'm, I'm I was certainly neck. wouldn't say Collingwood, put it that way. No, I'm getting a sore <laughs> neck, mate. My team's way at the bottom of the ladder, mate. I'm sick of looking up now. But um, yeah. Graham, thank you so much again, and thank you from your team at uh, BGC um, and also APTT uh, for putting this um, uh, together for us. So, mate, um, again. Yeah, thank you very much. I look forward to catching up with you at some point and um, we'll get some tradies over to you. Um, all the best with everything and we'll speak soon, I'm sure. Excellent. Thanks for that. Right. Nice. Appreciate Cheers, it. Cheers, buddy. Bye, mate. Bye, mate. Bye.